Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie. How are we doing today? I hope we're doing good. Actually, I hope we're doing more than good. I hope we're doing amazing and I hope we're doing fantastic. Any results. Today I have a slightly different video than my recent videos, which have all been tutorials pretty much. So my birthday is in like 10 days, which I can't even believe that I'm turning 25 in 10 days. I'm gonna be a quarter of a century old, which I think is kind of a cool accomplishment that I've made it to 25 years, a quarter of a century. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting old. <laughs> But because my birthday is like 10 days away, I've kind of been putting together a little bit of a shopping cart on the Sephora website. Am I going to buy anything? No, probably not. But I got my eyes peeled. I got my eyes out on a couple things. And I kind of wanted to show you what is in my $1,000 Sephora shopping cart. This is a video that people were doing, I think like a year or two ago. Um, but I thought that I would show you guys what is in my cart, the things that I'm lusting after right now. So if you guys would like to see what is in my Sephora shopping cart, there's like 18 items, then just keep on watching because I'm gonna show you. So I've moved over to this side so that way I can kind of put like a little image of what I'm talking about up here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go into my cart and I'm just gonna kind of go one by one explaining why I want the thing that I want. So the first thing is the Natasha Denona Triochrome Eyeshadow Palette. It is limited edition, I'm pretty pretty sure. Um, this was for holiday 2020. And I I don't own, okay, that's not true. I own like one small Natasha Nona eyeshadow palette, one of those like little itty bitty ones. The formula on her shadows is great, but I just like love her products in general. And I've always wanted one of her eyeshadow palettes. And the triochrome ones, like those three, like the green and the purple and that kind of like pinky shade, they're so unique. They're so cool. And the packaging on this palette is gorgeous as well. And I know I could do some just like really cool, fun looks with this palette, but the price. If I had a thousand dollars right now, okay, it's not true. If I had a thousand dollars, I'd be paying off a bunch of stuff. But if I had a thousand dollars extra just to like spend at Sephora, I would be getting the things in this cart and this palette would be one of those things because it's just, it's so beautiful. I wish COVID wasn't a thing so I could swatch the shadows like in person at the store, but I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, the Triochrome palette from Natasha Denona, it's $129, but I want it on my eyes. So the next item that I have on my list is the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Glowy Tinted Hydrator Foundation. I'm like asking myself, do I need another tinted moisturizer type of foundation? No, but do I want one? Yes. It's $29, which I feel is very reasonable for um, a tinted moisturizer from a brand like Urban Decay. It says that it has um, marula oil, which is great to hydrate the skin, but also kombucha filtrate, um, which is antioxidant rich to brighten and detox. I don't know, I don't know about like kombucha helping the skin, but I know kombucha does help to detox like the body. I don't know, but it looks really pretty. And I just love a good like sheer glowy foundation. And I don't, I don't know, I just, I wanna try it. Again, I, I wish COVID wasn't a thing so I could like take a sample from the store, but it is, so I can't do that. But yeah, I wanna try this foundation really bad. I want like a foundation and a concealer kick right now. I just wanna try so many different foundations. Um, fun fact, Nordstrom allows you to take samples and also test the product in store, which is both a good and a bad thing um, for the time that we're in right now. But I've kind of been trying out a couple different foundations, some new concealers and stuff. Um, and I just, I don't know, I wanna try this glowy tinted hydrator foundation really bad because it just, it, it screams my name, it's right up my alley. And I, I don't know what color I would be, but I chose the lightest shade, fair neutral. Urban Decay foundations have always kind of had like a an interesting shade range. Um, I used to work uh, inside of an Impulse in a Macy's, which is like a little mini Sephora instead of a Macy's. Um, so I sold Urban Decay and I just was never really a big fan of like their um, shade selection. I feel like their shades have always just been a little weird. I've never found a shade that matched me perfectly. Um, and this line is kind of no different. It's a very small shade range, but it is such a sheer tinted moisturizer that it's it's one of those things where even if it doesn't match perfectly, it looks good no matter what. Okay, any hoozles. Oh, I just realized that this shopping cart is like $1,026, but like, I mean, I could probably take one item off of the cart. I'm not gonna do that. It's roughly $1,000, you know, it's fine. So next, um, I've been wanting this for so long. This is the Kosas Color and Light Cream Blush and Highlighter Duo. Um, this one is in the shade Tropic Equinox. It's just like a bronzy blush and a kind of glowy champagne highlight. I love cream products. I think we know this, I wear them. Pretty often I'm wearing a lot of cream products today, which is why I look so ultra dewy. It says it's a warm, neutral, prismatic bronze, which I would have to agree with. I've seen it in store, again, haven't swatched it, but I have seen it in store. 
It is beautiful. This would be like the perfect, like go-to summery, like bronzer highlight type of deal. They have other shades also, but Tropic Equinox, I saw, I think like Alana Davison do a video using that product like forever ago. And it just looked so beautiful on her skin. That shade is really stunning. And it's just like a color, combo that is really right up my alley. I haven't tried anything from Kosas yet, but I've really been wanting to. Um, their products like definitely speak to me and I feel like their brand like philosophy, I'm kind of slowly like aligning myself with. So yeah, Kosas seems like a really great brand. I actually have a couple other items from them in my shopping cart, but this is one that I've been wanting for so, so long. And if I had to get anything in this cart, this might be it because I've been lusting for it for so long. And then I have a fragrance and I don't know if this is like cheating or not. Um, fragrances are a little bit more expensive. So you don't like literally I could make my cart entirely fragrances and maybe I have like five items. This is Mason Margiela Replica Beach Walk Perfume. I got a sample of this uh, maybe a year, two years ago and it is so beautiful. It is so summery. I love summery fragrances. I mean, I kind of love like all sorts of fragrances, but I do, there's a special place in my heart for like summery, beachy fragrances because they really take you to summer. And me living in Minnesota right now, it is like hella cold. It's always hella cold. It's like 23 degrees right now. Um, it's been in the negatives the last couple weeks, but we're getting, getting back up to the 20s. It's getting warm again. But it's so like beachy and coconutty and it transports me to summertime. And I feel like that really helps with kind of the morale when you're in a really cold climate, like in Minnesota. I actually really like the Mason Margiela replica perfumes. Um, there's like By the Fireplace is also really good at the Barbers. Um, I think there's one that's called like In the Library. They have a candle for that one too. It's so good. It smells like a, just like a freshly opened book. Ugh. This is another one of those items that I've kind of been lusting after for a while. Um, because as soon as I smell that perfume in that sample, I just felt in love. This fragrance also is just like on my perfume wish list, which is quite long. I have a, quite a few perfumes that I'm like. Okay, so the next on the list, I have another Kosas item. This is the Revealer Super Creamy and Brightening Concealer and Daytime Eye Cream. If you know me, you know I've got some dry, dry under eyes, just like a dry eye area as a whole. Um, but this concealer claims to have like eye cream in it. I believe there is hyaluronic acid in it and shea butter, um, which are just really hydrating um, ingredients. This is a, another instance where the shade selection is kind of weird. Um, I've been reading the reviews on this one because I have not gotten the chance to swatch it at all. Um, again, because this kind of came out more recently during COVID times. But people have been saying that the, like the lighter shades are just not that light. And I'm I'm really fair. I'm, I'm pasty. In most concealers, I'm either like the lightest or the second or third lightest one. But I believe I'm the lightest one in this one. I was looking at like some of the other ones and they just, I don't know, the shades are just kind of weird. And it doesn't seem like they're like in order. But it's supposed to be a medium coverage, super creamy concealer with like an eye cream built in. And I'm I'm all about that. Give me the hydration, give me the coverage, but not too much. And I've been watching a few videos on it as well. And everyone keeps on saying how amazing it is. So I, I have to try it. And again, I've been on a, like a concealer and a foundation kick lately. So this is one of those things that is just calling my name. Also, Alexandra Anel is one of the models on the Sephora website. That's cute. She's cute. For this one, I chose Tone 0.5N, very light with neutral undertones. I'm a little bit more on the yellow side, um, but the more warm concealer was like pretty dark. So that's what I'm saying about the shades. You know what I mean? It's $28 and I don't know, maybe it's just like me and my L'Oreal ass, but like that's a little steep for a concealer. But yeah, this concealer looks amazing. Every time I've watched a video and someone applies it, their skin, their under eyes just looks so good. So yeah, this concealer is definitely on my list despite it being a little bit more than I want to spend on a concealer I want to try it I want to try it real bad I have actually a lot of cheek products on here I'm a big like cheek product person if you've seen my blush drawer it's chaotic but I, I love blushes especially um so this is the rare beauty by Selena Gomez stay vulnerable melting cream blush the liquid blushes I'm also kind of attracted to, but this one, um, the girl at Sephora did allow me to touch it and ooh, the texture of these, they feel amazing. This is in the color Nearly Apricot. Um, I don't love the shade selection of these blushes. Personally, if I'm gonna buy a cream blush and it's something that I'm gonna wear a lot, 
I want to go with more of like a neutral color. Um, I like a good like peach. I mean, this is peach, but it's a little bit more like bright. I like a good like neutral peach or like a bronzy kind of shade. This one is a little bit more on the bright side um, as far as color goes, but the texture is very nice and they go on almost a little sheer. So I have a feeling that this won't be too bright on the cheeks anyway. I have heard amazing things about Rare Beauty I want to try them really bad. The blush is like one of the first things I want to try, but I'm also intrigued by her um, the liquid blushes, the highlighters, and then also the foundations. Rare Beauty, I think, was a pretty good launch. Um, I feel like it's I feel like it's a launch by Selena Gomez that feels very Selena Gomez. You know how sometimes um, a celebrity will come out with like a line, and it's just like you did this for money. But honestly, I do feel like a connection between like Selena and her actual products. And so yeah, I love how like authentic that feels to me. Like Fenty also feels very authentic. And then so does um, Halsey's About Face line, which I also wanna try. <laughs> Those products feel very authentic to them. Um, and I feel like the products from Rare Beauty feel very authentic to Selena Gomez and who she is as a person. But that's not why I wanna buy this blush. I wanna buy this blush because I love blushes and I'm a hoarder. So yeah, this is on the list, um, the Stay Vulnerable Melting Cream Blush. It's $21, by the way, which I feel like is very reasonable for a blush at Sephora. I have a range of different blushes from like inexpensive drugstore products to more expensive luxurious products. I like to really mix it up. I like that this is like right in the middle. I feel like $21 is a very reasonable price for a blush that you can find at Sephora. And it has nearly five stars with 304 reviews. So Selena's doing, Selena's doing something right right now, okay? Now I have another cheek product on my list. This is the Natasha Denona Love Cheek Duo Palette. There's a lot of Natasha on this list. I don't, I don't know what it is. I just love her products. They, they just, they're so, I don't know what it is. I love Natasha Denona products. To me, I feel like the quality is fantastic and I love the packaging on her products. They feel very chic and I just, I love me some Natasha Denona. But this cheek duo is like, up my alley. Again, we've got the cream blush, but then it has this really beautiful, like kind of rose gold highlighter. I have the Natasha Nona Bloom Blush and Glow Palette, and I love that palette. I love the texture of the cream blushes. And if this cream blush is anything like those ones, I know I'm gonna love this palette. And also like the packaging for this is just like so cute. And I'm a sucker for beautiful and cutesy packaging. And this packaging is so cutesy and I'm obsessed with it. And then also like the heart indentations on the highlight itself. They're just so cute. It's $42, which is fairly reasonable for Natasha Nona products. Like Natasha Nona is definitely like a high end to almost luxury brand. So $42 doesn't feel like extremely steep for her products. Again, she sells eyeshadow palettes for $129. So what do we expect? And even though I have a multitude of blushes and more specifically like cream blushes but also like blush palettes with highlighters like i have a lot of those do i need to spend 42 dollars on another one especially since i was literally just bashing on coaxes for having a 20 dollars concealer um blushes are something that i will put money into i don't know what it is i don't know why but i absolutely will spend an arm and a leg on a blush if i deem it to be extremely beautiful. Just like complexion products in general. I will dish out a bit more cash for those. I don't know why. I just, I love complexion products. And to me, like if the packaging's gorgeous, if the color is nice and it suits me, if it has long wear, if it adds value to my collection, I feel like it's worth it and whatever. But yeah, this palette is stunning. It is stunning, stunning. I want this cheek palette really bad. Do I need it? No, but do I want it? Absolutely. Okay, moving on. This is a hair product. I'm, br I'm breaking up breaking up the products here. So we've got some makeup. We have um, a touch of skincare, a touch of fragrance. We got a touch of hair care too. This is the Orbe Moisture and Control Deep Treatment Hair Mask. I have tried the Moisture and Control Shampoo and Conditioners. I have like little itty bitty like um, sample packets. Love the way they smell. Love the way they made my hair feel. I'm very happy that Orbe has been brought to Sephora because I really like Orbe products. They're more expensive. It's, it's not a high-end hair care line or like a salon hair care line. It is a luxury hair care line. The packaging is stunning. The prices are steep, but I don't feel like Orbe does that, like just for shits and gigs. I feel like genuinely their products do work. I have the Gold Lust hair oil. Um, I've tried the shampoo and conditioners from the moisture control line, and I really wanna try the deep treatment hair mask because my hair, she's a little, she's a little dry on the ends. We've got some, 
some uh, little crispy bits here. And I've been without a hair mask for a minute, but I love a good hair mask like once a week, maybe once every two weeks, just to add some moisture back into my hair. And you know, like self care and all that. Hair care is also one of those things that I will put more money into because I don't go through hair care products super often. To be honest, like all I really do is like wash my hair, brush it, maybe pop a little bit of product in it and let it dry and that's kind of it. I find that it does take me a bit longer to go through a hair care product, so I don't mind spending a tiny bit more money. $63 is kind of expensive for a hair mask if I'm being real, but ugh, Orbe products are so good, like so good. But also this thing is like eight and a half ounces, so that's a good amount of product. Even though it's more expensive, like it, it is still a good amount of product, so I feel like the price that you're paying like isn't that steep compared to how much product you are really getting for a luxury hair care product. But yeah, the Orbe hair mask, she's on my list. Um, I also have the, this is not on my Sephora specific list, but I also have the dandruff shampoo from Orbe um, in my cart at Camera Ready Cosmetics and I have a discount. So I'm gonna probably end up getting it from there, maybe, eventually. But my, my scalp's been like hella dry lately, so I need a lot of moisture um, and I really wanna try the dander shampoo because my scalp she a little she's she going through it right now so I just I need some moisture lots of it okay next I have the Charlotte Tilbury lip luster lip gloss in the shade Ibiza Nights oh my god this gloss this gloss I swatched it at Nordstrom because again Nordstrom allows you to like swatch products and stuff and oh my god this gloss is stunning I used to not really be a gloss person but over the last Especially like year or so, I've been really into glosses. I'm wearing one right now. I love a good glossy lipstick, but I also just love a good gloss. And this one is a gorgeous like champagne nude with the most intense sparkle. And I love, I love sparkly glosses. Especially if you're wearing like a lip look, like if you have like a lip liner and a lipstick, adding a sparkly gloss over top, it just, mm, just adds a little bit of, mm. The texture of this gloss, it's a bit on the tacky side, but I don't mind that personally. Coming from someone who worked at MAC, I have like a million lip glasses and those things are hella sticky, but I really like them. They're ultra shiny and I, I don't mind a sticky gloss. I do love a good like oily gloss. I have a couple Fenty glosses here and then a Bite Beauty one as well. I don't mind a good like oily kind of moisturizing gloss. They go on really nice. They're super hydrating and they're not sticky, but I don't mind again a sticky gloss, especially if I'm doing like a full lip look. I feel like it just adds just like a little bit of extra like oomph. And this color with like a nude or a brown lipstick. Mm. And this one is $22, which like, yes, $22 is a little bit steep for like a regular lip gloss, um, especially with how small these glosses are. These ones are 3.5 mils. It's, it's pretty small, but I feel like you don't really need a lot of this gloss anyway. Just like a couple little like, little just like taps on the lip and that's gonna give you all the lip luster goodness that you need. It's a beautiful gloss, man. It's, yeah, ultra reflective, beautiful, shimmery. This gloss is like right up my alley. This is like speaking to me, calling my name. But yeah, love me a good gloss. Moving on. This is another product that I've had in my Sephora cart for like a minute. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina Pro Pigment Palette Volume 3. Tell me why. I went into Sephora a couple months ago being like, finally, I'm gonna buy this palette. I've been wanting this for a minute. The color story, very 60s, 70s vibes. I love the muted kind of warm tones. I'm obsessed. I, I love this color story. So tell me why I go into Sephora a couple months ago, maybe. I'm like, I'm gonna buy this palette. I'm ready to buy it. And I walk in and I'm like, hey, Sephora, do you guys have the Norvina Volume 3 palette? And they were like, no, we only sell it online. I am an instant gratification kind of person. If I see something, I want it and I want it now. I don't want to wait. So when I found out that they stopped carrying this palette in the store and they only carry it on the website now, I was crushed. I, st I want this palette. Like I really want this palette. The color story speaks to me in a way that an eyeshadow palette really hasn't spoken to me in a minute. And despite me having like quite a bit of eyeshadow palettes in my cart at Sephora, this one to me, I've wanted the longest. $60 is fairly reasonable for a shadow palette that size, for an Anastasia palette, for the range of colors, for the amount of colors that you get, 60 bucks isn't bad. I wish that they sold this in store because 
Again, if I want something, I want it now. I don't want to wait. Everything that's in my cart right now, they sell at Sephora, like in store. I don't do no online only BS, okay? If I want something, I want to go into the store and I want to buy it because I want to take it home with me right away and play with it. I hate having to wait. But yeah, this, this palette, I want. I want it so bad and I wish they sold it in stores, but I guess it's an online only thing now. Maybe sometime in the future, maybe the near future, maybe the far future. I will order this palette online, maybe when Sephora has their next like 15 or 20% off sale, but for now it's staying in my cart. Okay, next I have another Charlotte lip product. This is the Hot Lips Lipstick in Kim KW. I'm not a Kardashian Jenner kind of gal. N never have been, never will be. I mean, okay, that's not true. I'm interested in them, but I'm not like fans. I'm not like obsessed with them. And I remember when this Kim KW lipstick came out, everyone was like, I need it. It's based off of Kim Kardashian and her makeup is perfect and beautiful. And her makeup is perfect and beautiful. I will give her that. But it's not because of Kim Kardashian that I want this color. It's because of the color. My ideal lipstick, if I'm gonna pick a lipstick that I'm gonna wear, regularly my ideal lip color like my lip combo is like a nude lip pencil and an ultra nude lipstick i love a good like ultra nude lipstick especially with like a dark eye i just feel like the contrast works and i'm very fair so i i like a little bit more of like a neutral lip to again add some balance this color reminds me a lot of myth from mac which is my favorite mac lipstick of all time and i've never tried charlotte tilbury's lipstick formula but i've heard it's amazing and i just this color this color is really calling my name it looks beautiful and i just i just want to wear that beautiful nude lipstick i also love the indentation in the like the, the bullet the little lip it's super cute 34 dollars. it's a little steep for lipstick but charlotte tilbury is a luxury line so while it is a little steep it's also not surprising do i need this lipstick no but do i want it of course i do that color is so me I don't care about any Charlotte Tilbury lipstick other than this one. Pillow Talk, don't care. Walk of No Shame, don't even know you. Kim KW, the perfect nude, for me at least. I also like, I don't need a lipstick right now because I mean, on a regular basis, this, this is all that you see of my face is this right here. No lipsticks, no lips visible. So getting a lipstick right now, not really on my list of priorities, but it's a beautiful lipstick. And maybe eventually when we stop wearing masks, maybe I'll pick this up. Even though I did put a gloss on my cart. Priorities. Okay, I have another Natasha Nona eyeshadow palette. There's gonna be a lot of Natasha in this video, I'm sorry. So this is the Mini Love eyeshadow palette from Natasha Nona. It's only $25, which for five shades, it's not that bad, I don't think. The pans are a tiny bit small, like on the smaller side, but for Natasha Nona, I feel like $25 for five shades isn't really unreasonable. I'm really not like a mauve kind of person. The mattes in this palette are a little bit more on the mauve toned side, but the shimmers, ooh, the shimmers. Oh my God, okay, I love the actual like shade names. It's the color U, there's a color named R, there's a color named My, and then one called True and one called Love. You are my true love. That's so cute. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. The shades You, the shades True, and the shades Love, those metallic, shimmery shades. Oh, those are beautiful. And Natasha Nona has, um, same with like Pat McGrath, some really beautiful like duochrome, triochrome shades in their collection. And I just, I love shadows like that because they're so unique and I don't own a lot of things like that. I own a lot of eyeshadows. Let me be clear. I have two drawers worth of eyeshadow palettes, like full, full, full. But these shades are very unique. So it's like, I don't have anything like that in my collection. So I'm justifying it. But yeah, this palette is super cute. I really like the color story. It's very unique. I'm obsessed with those. Uh, shimmer shades and $25 for a Natasha Nona product. I feel like it's not really that bad and it's not limited edition either That makes me very excited. The trial chrome palettes limited So if I really want to buy it, I gotta be a little quick on it But this one I can wait. I can wait on this one. Natasha Nona. She knows what she's doing She's got me by the cojones. Okay by my invisible cojones I'm like on a Natasha Nona choke chain basically in her clutches because the next product that I have on my list is another Natasha Nona palette this is the Biba All Natural Eyeshadow Palette. Oh my God, a neutral palette. How original. I love the range of colors and tones in this palette. Is it a neutral shadow palette? Yes, but this very well could be 
my go-to neutral palette. Like if I'm going somewhere traveling, which in this pandemic, I think not, but eventually when, when I travel, um, I would like to bring along perhaps just one neutral shadow palette. And I feel like this would be it. I could also interchange it into my kit. There's a good mix of warm tones and some cool tones, some deeper shades. It's got some really gorgeous shimmers. And I've heard amazing things about this palette. It has almost five stars. Is it $129? Yes, it is. It's very expensive. It's just like the Triochrome palette. Expensive, but without the really unique shades. I don't need it. I, I'm fully aware that I, I do not need to spend $129 on a neutral shadow palette. But like I said, Natasha's got me in her clutches, okay? She knows what she's doing. She knows how to get my attention and she knows how to hold it there too. It's like every product that she releases, she's like, I'm gonna make Maddie wish she had money for this. Ugh, any oozles. Uh, the Natasha Nona Biba All Neutral Eyeshadow Palette. I, I want it. Do I need it? No, but I want it. Next, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Vanish Color Corrector. Um, I chose the shade Fair, pink for light skin tones. I was thinking of doing the Becca one because um, it's the same price, it's 32, but I've heard a lot of people comparing the two of them, the Charlotte with the Becca one. I like that Charlotte has a better color range. Becca has two shades and Charlotte has four. And one of them goes very deep, like a deep red. Um, there's a deep orange, there's like a medium peach, and then there's also like pink. And I feel like that's a really good array of shades. It, it's just a color corrector, so you don't need like 10 of them. Four is a good amount, but I feel like two, Becca, come on girl. I swatched this product maybe once or twice. It's very creamy. Um, the coverage is nice. I have some dark under eye circles. I I'm wearing concealer, like I, I always wear concealer, but still I find that I have a bit of darkness on my under eyes. It's just how I was born. Um, So I'm kind of in the market for a color corrector right now. And I just, I love me some Charlotte products. I've heard great things about this one. I heard it's very similar to the Becca one, which I want to try anyway, but I also just love Charlotte's products and her packaging is gorgeous. And this has really good reviews. It has four stars. I've used color correctors in the past. Um, sometimes they can be very, either way too thick or way too thin. But I like the texture of this one because I feel like it has the right amount of thickness um, and kind of creaminess. Uh, it's not dry. It doesn't feel heavy. Um, I. I like it. It seems like a good product and I really want to try it. And my under eyes are in need of some correction. So yeah, Charlotte Magic Vanish Color Corrector in Fair. She's on my list. So recently I've kind of been talking to you guys about the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I love this stuff. I go back and forth on it a lot where sometimes I'll use it like morning and night all the time. And then sometimes I just like don't use it at all. But um, recently I've been getting a lot of use out of it. It's been just sitting on my desk. So when I do my morning skincare routine, it's on my lips. When I do my nighttime skincare routine, it's on my lips. If I'm doing makeup, if I'm just chilling at home, it's on my lips. It is truly one of the most like hydrating lip balms that is out there. It feels so good on the lips and my lips have been hella dry lately. I had this really nasty like spot that was like crusty and peely and it was just not cute. But this really helps to cure the dryness that Minnesota winters bring. So I've added the lip sleeping mask in vanilla into my cart. This one is the berry flavor, I think, like mixed berry or something like that. It's fine, it's the original flavor and it's not bad, I don't mind it. I have the peach tube in my purse. I actually hate that with like a passion, but the lip sleeping mask in vanilla, I've heard great things about it, and I love vanilla. Vanilla is one of my all time favorite flavors along with like caramel, but it depends on where it is. Anyways, the lip sleeping mask in vanilla, it's $22, which you're like, oh, 22 bucks is kind of steep for a lip product, but with how much product is in here, it's um, 0.7 ounces. That's a lot. Foundations are one ounce. It's literally 0.3 ounces less than a foundation. So there's a, quite a bit of product in here. This has lasted me for a long time, and I know the vanilla one's gonna last me a long time too, or should I say the vanilla one would also last me a long time? I don't need this in like every flavor. They have many flavors. They have many flavors of like the squeezy tube lip balm. Um, I feel like it's just the peach one that I don't like. I need to try a different one. But uh, I want to try different flavors of the original one because it's, I love this product. Once I'm out of this, which I'm, I have a feeling I'll be out soon with how often I use it, I want to try other flavors. And the vanilla one, 
that's just like right up my alley. I'm a big, I'm a vanilla gal. I'm plain, plain Jane, vanilla bean. I don't know. Okay, so next on the list. This is another eyeshadow palette. I, I, I got it on the list. I can't tell you why. I love eyeshadows. That's it, okay? This is a Pat McGrath Labs. This is the Mothership 2 eyeshadow palette in Sublime. I've never once tried any product from Pat McGrath, but everybody says that our eyeshadows are like the best. This color story is also like very me. It's very fall inspired. Um, it has some nice warm browns. That pop of green is really beautiful. It's got that gorgeous like shimmery gold. It's $125. But the packaging on her palettes are just like stunning. They're like heavy, heavy duty with like gold um, like detailing. And then the box itself has this cute little like wrap thing, like closure. It's just Pat McGrath. Listen, she is a makeup artist. She makes products um for a type of person that wants beautiful visually stunning luxurious makeup that's pat mcgrath this palette is quite beautiful i've heard just amazing things about her shadow formula um i just uh, i don't know i want to try pat mcgrath lab so bad because i just hear so many great things about her products um and i if you did not know this pat mcgrath used to be a mac makeup artist along with charlotte tilbury and there's just something about somebody who's like reached that like echelon of like makeup artistry um, that comes from Mac. There's something about that to me that I just, I really connect with. So yeah, Pat McGrath, Sublime, Mothership 2 palette. She's, she's in my shopping cart. She has a lot of palettes. The Pat McGrath palettes, a lot of them have some gorgeous, unique colors, but this one to me is just kind of what spoke to me the most. Um, the bronze one, I also am interested in, um, but this one has that really beautiful gold. So that is the one that I chose to put into my cart. And for this video, I kind of just limited myself to a thousand dollars, a thousand twenty six, but who's counting? So the next thing in my cart is the Herbivore Emerald CBD and Adaptogens Deep Moisture Glow Oil. I've heard great things about Herbivore um, and at my place of employment, people have been talking about this specific oil. Herbivore has a regular emerald oil, but this one has CBD um, and it is the deep moisture glow oil with adaptogens. If you don't know what adaptogens are, um, pretty much they're products that are derived naturally that kind of help your skin adapt to like environmental stressors. Um, ca caffeine is an adaptogen. There's other adaptogens, but that one is the only one that I can think of at the moment. I go back and forth with applying oils to my skin. I don't ever apply them during the day uh, just because I can sometimes get shiny like towards the end of the day and I don't want anything to like really speed the process up. Like sure it adds a lot of glow, but I use a lot of like glowy moisturizers and serums in the morning anyway. I really only use oils at night, either underneath or on top of my moisturizer. I am using one right now. I've used some in the past, but I go back and forth. Sometimes I will apply an oil and then sometimes I'm just kind of lazy and I don't really feel like it. But this one is for deep moisture and glow. And if you know me, you know that's all about me. It's $58, which for an oil, that is a little expensive. Um, I've kind of moved, or I'm kind of moving away from more expensive skincare items, which is why I only have one skincare product on here. It's because I just like, skincare is one of those things that I use constantly. I'm constantly using my moisturizer, my eye cream, my serums, like every single day and night. And so when I run out of a product, I don't wanna have to spend an arm and a leg to replenish it. There's only a couple products right now that I really will put money into, um, like my eye cream and then my Ole Henriksen toner. Um, but oils, I feel like I don't really use super often, um, or at least I don't use a lot of them, maybe one to two drops um, on my face and neck at night, and that's really it. So I feel like this would take me a little bit longer to kind of go through. So $58, yeah, that is a little steep, but it's not like super unreasonable. Um, but yeah, Herbivore Emerald CBD oil. I got my eye on you. Okay, so we have one last product. Um, this is another item that's been on my list for quite some time. Like I said, I love me a good complexion product. I love bronzers, I love blushes, I love highlights, and I love liquids and creams. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. I almost said Hollywood Flawless Filter, because... Uh, but this is the Hollywood Contour Wand in the shade Fair to Medium. Every time that I've seen somebody apply this in a video, it looks perfect, stunning, visually beautiful. I so, so badly want to try this product. I don't need 
more contour bronzing products, but I want them. There are some weeks where I'll just like use the same product over and over as far as like bronzing goes um, when I do wear a full base of makeup, but there are some times where I do like to switch it up. Um, right now I'm really into the Fenty uh, cream bronzer and the powder bronzer, but sometimes I'm into my milk makeup with my MAC Studio Fix powder. Sometimes I like my ColourPop powder bronzer. Um, sometimes I like something different. And this one, she different. It's in like a squeezy tube and then it has like a little like kind of spongy applicator, perfect for just like dotting it onto the cheeks. Um, and it's a very like liquidy consistency, but it's easy to blend out. It just looks so beautiful. And I love glowy, creamy bronzers and highlights and blushes, as you well know, because of my videos and also because of all the stuff that's on this list. But yeah, she's $38. I feel like that is a little bit more on the expensive side, um, but again, Charlotte Tilbury, not unreasonable for her price point. Um, so that's it. That is what's in my $1,026 Sephora shopping cart. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you really liked it. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more of me, then just hit subscribe. All of my social media links will be down in the description box. So if you'd like to follow me elsewhere, it's gonna be down there. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.